Welcome to today's webinar, 21st Century Training Delivery Tips, Tools, and Technologies with guest speaker, Leslie Osborne. Before we begin, a little bit about your technology today. Your lines have been muted for the duration of the webinar, but we encourage you to ask questions at any time in the question box. You can open and shut the panel by using the double arrow or orange arrow on the chat panel. Now, a little bit about our speaker today. Leslie is a veteran educational professional at Techsoft Ventures. She has over a decade's worth of training experience and extensive knowledge in the software education space that we'll be talking about today. Recent highlights include an SAP education project with over 600 users and an extensive WMS rollout utilizing Manhattan Associates software. With that, Leslie, the floor is yours. Thank you, Alan, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Bon dia. Aloha. Bonjour. Let's go ahead and start looking at training these days. Did you know that your employees care about their work, about their company, and they want to learn more? Did you ever think of your employees that way? There are technology tools that can boost learning because they allow you to entertain and educate your employees. And that's a great way to get into people's heads is by entertaining them. And if you haven't started, started, you might want to start getting into your learners' heads by understanding them. Blend your training. Find methods that work for them. Find what speaks to them and will make that training and that knowledge stick. Because when you use good training methods, you will see an increase in employee satisfaction, which is going to result in work performance. It's going to result in employee retention. In other words, these are ROIs for training. The return on your investment is going to be employee satisfaction, work performance increases, retention instead of retraining. Who knew that this guy would ever be out of style? I mean, when you were watching him going, hey, you didn't expect it, did you? Well, things do go out of style. Speaking of out of style, here are some training methods that are gone. They're in the back of the closet, or you need to take them to Goodwill, OK? Rote learning is one of them. You know, that's when you tell somebody, do this, do this, do this, and now just do it again. It's kind of like how you learned to say your ABCs. You did it over and over and over again. And I know that there are some of us out there that didn't know that there were L, M, N, O, and P, because I know a lot of us went N, M, N, O, OK? because we were just hearing it, and that's how we heard it. That's rote learning. It's done. Step-by-step -step instructions. Well, it's kind of rote learning, but we write it down. OK, so OK, you don't have to ask me anymore. I wrote it down for you, so you can just continue to read it. But there's no knowledge there. It's just steps. One and done education. That's when you say, hey, great to have you aboard. Glad you joined our company. Here's what you're going to do, and we'll see you at the Christmas party. One and done. No more. Out of style also is the thought that everyone learns exactly the same way. You know, the education system has figured out that children don't all learn the same way. So guess what? That same thought applies to adult learning. We all have different experiences. We all have different things that speak to us. So we all learn differently. And finally, it's just out of style for leaders and companies to overlook those naturally existing trainers and mentors. There are people out there right now who are just natural leaders and train people and care that people learn. And people go to them over and over again because they are explaining the how and why not just do this. This is why we do this. This is who it's going to affect if we don't do it right. And if so-and-so doesn't do it right before it gets to us, this is what we have to do in order to fix the problem. Don't overlook those natural trainers. So let's go ahead and dig into these topics. Your employees want to learn. They want to do good work. This information was actually taken from a retrain or retain survey that was done by a staffing firm. 
And in this survey, they found that about 60% of employees would leave their current position for a competitive offer. 60%. Now, nearly half of those employees also said, it's because nobody gives me any more education or any more training. That's why I'm dissatisfied. I had a manager once who told me, Leslie, always, 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 one-third of the people are staying. One-third of the people are coming in, and one-third of the people are going. Well, if you take that information and you look at these survey results, it doesn't match up, does it? But if those companies were doing the retraining and the education, those numbers would match up. We're back to one-third, one-third, one-third. The survey reveals a positive correlation between employee development and the likelihood of an employee to stay. And that's that ROI of retention that we talked about earlier. How employees learn. This is a graphic of Malcolm Knowles's adult learning andragogy. Now maybe some of you have heard of Malcolm Knowles and what he did is he designed this theory based on these assumptions of how adults learn. And we apply it a lot in our company when we're looking at developing training for adults. And first of all, if you look at the center of this graphic, you'll see adult learning, okay? That's actually the person. That's their self-concept, okay? That's who, who he or she is in, in the whole of, of their life. And then if you go directly to the right, you see experience. And adults draw on their experiences to aid in their learning of whatever is coming next. And if you think about it, you're always going, oh, this is like this I did one time, or oh, this is like this that I did one time, or that I heard about one time. We're always drawing on experiences. Readiness to learn. That comes from you as the leadership giving them the information of why these changes are coming and why they're going to have to learn that, and you're getting them ready to learn. The orientation to learning, that's, as adults, when we learn something, we want to apply it. The whole use it or lose it concept, okay? You teach us something new, you've got us excited, we figured out how to assimilate that into our thought process based on our previous experiences, and now we want to apply it in our job right now. And then the self-concept and motivation to learn at the very top of the graphic, that's as these things are done over and over again. You get your employees ready to learn, you teach them, and you let them learn it again. You build this amazing internal factor inside your people that keeps them wanting to learn and wanting to do better. Change it up. Education plus entertainment equals edutainment. Adults require variety. We've got a full brain. We've got lots of stuff going on there. So in order for us to learn something new, maybe you want to just make it a little bit different. So have you ever edutained your users? We're going to go ahead and look at some tools, technology tools, in this day and age that are really neat for, for training, for giving information, for gathering information. Now almost all of these tools are totally trackable. You can see who's viewed them, how long they viewed them, how many times they've been viewed. You can use them for monthly meetings, sending out emails for process changes that are coming, anything that you can get any kind of use out of. So the first one we're going to look at is Brain Shark. Now what a Brain Shark is, it's a PowerPoint with voiceover. You can have one voice, you can have two, you can have three people talking. And people watch this whenever they have a chance. And it might go something like this. Welcome, everybody, to our Opus Sneak Peek. This is Sneak Peek number two out of ten. We're glad you could join us. Today, we're going to look at how you can find some help in SAP without having to ask anybody, send an email, or make a phone call. And it's called Self-Help.
we'd like to thank you for joining us today. You have a great day, and we'll talk to you on the next Opus Sneak Peek soon. So that's a brain shark. Nothing's moving, but there's definitely some information being shared, and the screenshots are seen by everybody. Code Baby is the next technological tool we want to talk about today. And Code Baby is using those avatars, those cute Ken and Barbie figures that go across the screen and talk to us, and they can do whatever you want them to do, and they can be wearing whatever you want them to wear. And they're very engaging and very entertaining. As you can see, they can have different gestures and different screens behind them as you're training your learners. And that's Code Baby. Now next, we're going to look at an actual live review of one of these 21st century tools. Okay? And we are going to go to Go Animate. As you can see here, I already have a scene set. And in this scene, we're actually in an exam room at a hospital or a clinic. And we have the training management leadership on the left. Her name is Julie. And on the right, we have the healthcare provider, Dallas. And we have Julie already over here set up to say, Hi, Dallas. I hear you are the go-to person around here for questions and information. Now, you can't hear these voices today, but I am going to show you how you can actually build this. So next, we are going to add a scene. And Dallas is going to respond to Julie. So we're going to go down here, and we're going to find Dallas's name. And as you could see, there were different flags, because your characters can actually have different accents. And the names actually kind of specify the region that they're from. So Dallas is going to have what kind of accent? If you said Southern, you are correct. So Dallas is going to say to Julie, I guess, you could say that. I enjoy helping others learn. And most of all, enjoying their work. And when I add the voice, you can see his mouth talking over here. You really can't hear. And he has this really deep southern accent that he's speaking with. We're going to add another scene. And Julie is going to get really excited and she is going to drop to her knees. Whoops. and say to Dallas, please enlighten me. Share your tools with us to help us revamp our training program. And then we add her voice, and of course you'll see her talking again. Now, I know that there are lots of different people on this webinar call today. Again, thank you for joining us. And not everybody may be interested in having a medical examination room as your background. So I'm going to show you that you have choices. And if I add a scene, I can see that I can change my background. So I am going to go to the warehouse. I'm not going to change my people. I can do that too. Dallas 
is going to change his action and he's going to go over here and sit on this pallet and he is going to say I suppose I could do that. I think training and education are the best ways to keep employees happy, productive, and here. I'll change Dallas's voice. He might sound a little bit funny talking like Julie. You can see he's sitting on the pallet talking to Julie here. We're going to add one more scene in which Julie accepts and is excited again because that's just Julie's nature. She's going to join him on the pallets to show her camaraderie. And she, of course, says, great, let's have a cup of coffee and talk. You can see her little mouth moving. She's all excited. And now we can go ahead and preview this entire message that's going to go out to all of your employees. You can make sure you like it before you send it out. You'll see their voices moving. You'll see Julie's talking right now. Dallas is responding. Yeah, I like to help people learn. Julie's asking for his help. And you can see that you can have different backgrounds using this tool. And that is Go Animate. Now, all of these tools that we talked about, Code Baby, Brain Shark, and Go Animate, there's lots of different layers, technical layers, and to use them to their fullest potential requires a lot of time and requires some skill. So that took me, uh, you know, I don't know, three or four minutes to make that little ditty, and it didn't have a whole lot of content to it. But it does take some time, but what a great way to engage your learners, to get them excited about where they are and what's going on. So we talked about one of our topics today was getting in your employees' heads in a good way, okay? And you can do that by using what already exists. <clears throat> this quote was actually taken from a Xerox Park case study. And in it, this manager of professional development said, if you can recognize and leverage the idea of naturally existing communities of practice, okay, naturally existing groups of training, training gets better because you're not fighting human nature. It's not one dog against six goats, okay? Learning becomes more efficient and less expensive, and people like it when you involve them in development. So that's what our Go Animate was showing, is that Julie had recognized that Dallas was this natural leader and a natural trainer. He cared that people enjoyed what they were doing and knew what they were doing. So she's going to Dallas and saying, hey, I want to capitalize on this stuff that you already know. Would you be willing to help me? Because he is that naturally existing leader. Make the most of. This is still from that same Xerox Park case study. Capitalize on employees' familiar work practices and the socially constructed nature of learning. In other words, see what's going on in your company already and capitalize on that. Don't change it. Use it. The key to success is for the training program to provide shared, real-world context. Okay? We learn by doing. 
We all know that. And systematic peer mentoring opportunities. So here, this goat has learned to stand on the back of this horse and get to the really good leaves because he's tired of eating grass. Okay? They have worked together to make this happen. That kind of stuff is going on in your companies all the time. And this is how important it is to engage. This is an example of engaging your employees in, in the learning process. I worked at a company that was implementing an EHR, I mean an ERP, excuse me. And the company was all over the United States, I mean all over the place. So in order to kind of gather everybody together, we, they put on a company-wide, what should we name the program? Okay, and then there, of course, were panelists that went ahead and, and did the voting. And then after we decided on the name, they did a company-wide contest of, we need a logo to go with this name. I mean, what a great way to automatically get everybody involved. Is your company a learning organization? These questions that are right here, or these statements about a learning organization, are actually taken from The Fifth Discipline, which is a book, a book by Peter Singh. And he defined a learning organization. And this information is actually taken from a European case study. But is your company a place where people continually get to expand, get to grow in the ways that they want to grow? Are new patterns of thinking encouraged? Can groups of people have ideas and, and, and aspire to make that idea come to fruition? Is your company a place where people are continually learning and encouraged to learn? Now I know some of you might be thinking, okay, these are really lofty ideas. But the survey showed 60% of people are ready to run at any time. And half of those 60 would stay if you were giving them opportunities to learn, to grow, to be empowered. So that case study, this European case study, says that a learning organization is continually getting smarter. Because learning is planned and systematic. And it's actually part of the company's goals. Shared vision involves individuals building a sense of commitment in their work groups and developing ideas and future ideas and principles and practices together. Team learning involves enabling groups of people to develop abilities that make them as a group better than just a bunch of individuals. And personal mastery involves individuals learning to expand their own capacities, their own skills, and being able to say, I want to learn how to, this, to do this, and their company saying, all right, how is that going to help us? What's our return if we let you learn this skill? Okay, let's go for this. Development is about helping the person grow and extend their abilities. Tesco is a company that has a shared responsibility approach to training and development. And that's who this information is taken from, is that study. The trainee at Tesco is primarily responsible for his or her development. Okay? They go to their manager and they say, okay, these are the things that I'd like to do. These are the things I'd like to learn. And then there's a plan, do, review checklist. Employees are encouraged to ask themselves these strategic questions each time they want to go and head and learn a new skill or cross-train on something. And that is, do I know how? Can I do it now? And what are my current skills? Do I have the right prerequisites? Right? Personal development helps to produce long-lasting competencies, which means employees are more positive, productive, and valuable. Motivation theorists suggest that if people are given the skills to do their jobs well, 
the support to grow their abilities and have greater responsibility, it makes them more effective. I think it's simple math. I think employees plus training is going to increase their sense of ownership in your company. Growth occurs when you give training to your employees. It occurs in the organiz their organization, their productivity, and their flexibility, which always means that you are going to get the return of them doing better with their coworkers, with your clients, with your customers. Everything improves. And employees plus training equals new skills and abilities, which can empower staff. Training is the acquisition of knowledge and skills in order for a person to carry out tasks or jobs. And at this te in this Tesco case study, before undertaking training and development, the employees have to identify their gaps. They have to go ahead and say, I don't have this knowledge. I don't have these skills. And then the gaps are logged, and then they work to fill in those gaps of knowledge and skills on their plan, do, and review. So I encourage you to go out and go blended with your training. Do it in a new way. Ask employees to participate. Find those naturally existing leaders. See what they do. See how you can expound upon what's already going on someplace in your company. Make your training edgy. Capture their attention. When you capture their attention, you engage them. When you ask them to participate, you engage them. You don't have to. You find yourself having to go and ask. You find them coming to you eventually. And know your ROI. What do you want to do? What's this training supposed to do? Do you have a retention problem? Because retraining employees can get very costly. So if you're working on retention, design your training program around that. Is it work performance? Do you have quality issues? Do you have attendance issues? Production issues? Know what the return on investment is that you're wanting. There's a great study out there about a company called Sodexo. S-O-D-O-X-O. S-O-D-E-X-O. And it talks about how they revamped their entire training program and what they have been able to do. They've been able to save a million dollars because of the way that they revamped their training and retention has gone up and productivity has gone up. It's a great study. And I hope today that we have provided you some ways to take your training, move those things that are out of style out of your training methods, move some things that are 21st century into your training methods, and have given you some excitement about doing that. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. And we do have some questions that have come in. Uh, we've had a large audience today, so we'll run through those. While we're doing that, we'll launch a poll if anyone wants a copy of the PowerPoint slides, for example, or additional information. You can select as many of these as you want, and we'll make sure that we get back to you with the pertinent information. You can see that on your screen now and just vote as you wish. First question, how can you train our warehouse personnel using some of the concepts discussed? Huh. Well, warehouse people, I think, are, are some of the people that most companies worry about the most because you say, well, they are rote learning. That's all they do is they come to work and they do the same thing over and over again. Not true. Not true. There are naturally existing leaders out there in your warehouses, people that go to them. Find those people. Find out what they're needing out there. What would they like to see? What would they like to have? And then what about cross-training people? Cross-training your warehouse people is going to keep them excited. They're going to learn new skills. They're going to learn new capabilities and going to be able to have better discussions and maybe come up with better ideas for productivity. Thank you. The uh, next question uh, that was submitted, how long do you recommend that the training animation session should be? A training animation session when you're creating it, it's so fun. You know, you could make it 10, 15 minutes because you're having a great time, right? But I wouldn't make it any more than three to five minutes. You want to get in, you want to impart some information, and you want to get out. 
Thank you. I think we have time for one final question. Uh, what do you recommend is the first step in revamping a training program? Step number one. Revamping your training program, it's your ROI. You have to know what are you wanting to accomplish. You, just, you, have, to, you have to know that because without that, you're just throwing, throwing training into the wind. Well, thank you very much, Leslie, for another great webinar, and thank you all for attending this webinar. TechSoft has been running uh, monthly webinars, and we'll take a quick hiatus for the holidays and come back in January with the next topic. If you have additional uh, questions or would like information, feel free to contact Kathy Swank. Her phone number, 239-963-9698, is on the slide right now, or kathy.swank at techsoftventures.com. TechSoft also has an extensive amount of resources on their site, techsoftventures.com, a terrific amount of recorded webinars and additional content applicable to the topic today and other training-related topics. With that, this web seminar is now ending. Thank you all, and have a great day.